Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. I've got this one thing that I've, uh, it came from Ian Thomas's ministry. He said it was in his work with young men. He told the, the testimony of this young Russian man who was born again, and he said, I told the Lord that I loved him so much that I would do anything he asked of me. So I yielded and I yielded and I yielded, and one day I realized another life was living me. I love that. Is some uh, part of the choosing not the choosing just to rest in him? Is that not just the, I mean, I see it as it could be the bottom line that I'm just choosing to rest because I can choose to strive. I can choose to work. I can choose to wrestle, but to choose to rest and to lean, that's huge. John, you just sparked a big fire. Yay! Okay, John, here is the word let. Did you mean to, for me to go there? <laughs> you, you had that up your sleeve, didn't you? It, it's letting God do what he likes and letting yourself be where you are. Letting yourself be. Letting yourself be, be vulnerable, be angry. You describe an anger, Jennifer. That, bring that to him. Bring it all to him. David did. But it's letting God be whatever mystery he wants to be without opposing him. And the, the most difficult commandment to me, in our, uh, it was a commandment of the kingdom values, do not resist what evil men do to you. Do not resist at all. I have a teeny speck of experience with that where only the life of Christ can not resist evil. We've had the most incredible, bizarre assault of evil lately, I'll say. And God intends us by acquiescence and leaning. Acquiescence is harder than leaning. Leaning happens to you, but acquiescence is letting God have it and letting God be whatever he wants to be and letting yourself be whatever you want to be. Letting everything be a hot mess. Let everything be a, a mysterious dilemma. Just letting it be. Not trying to fix it, not trying to defend yourself, not trying... Uh, just let it be. I'm trying to think of the, if the Lord will give me an example of this. So I've realized in my life lately that I'm not as afraid of my own choices as I am of other people's. And I think it's something about being a mom and fearing for my kids and like you just saying, don't resist what evil men do to you, to even know that that is in the hands of the Lord, of like, we could be driving on our windy road and some drunk person could hit my car and my kids could die. You know, going to the bottom line, like where my mind goes with my kids sometime, and I know it's fear. And like we talked about your son flying in Baghdad, and I asked her, how do you do that as a mom? You know, like, how do you let that go? Um, but the choices of evil men or not even evil, but the, just the everyday choices of other people that we, or, no that we have no control of, or even the choices of our husband that's leading our family. And you're wondering, God, is this your will? Is this like the sovereignty of God along with our decisions or our choices? And how does that, you know what I'm saying? Conceal. Um, yeah. That dilemma is solved by relationship with him. It's solved by his voice, and you're constantly being seeking his face. Face when, when 
David said, you said, Lord, seek my face, so I seek your face. It means intimate relationship. I have this on my mind. I really don't want to share it. It's so precious. I want to be where I can expand it more. But the problem of the garden was saving self. And the problem that has to be resolved in each of us is refusing to save yourself. And when you save your life, you lose it. And when you lose your life, you save it. That's the paradox, the great mysterious paradox of the Christian life and of Jesus' calling. So when it's not that you let evil prevail, in the relationship you will know when to bind and rebuke. You will know when to confront. We can attest to that. But in in many situations, it's letting it alone and letting God have it. So really, it's a matter of communication with Him in situations that you have to have His guidance. And moment by moment, and issue by issue. Uh, I, was, I can't think of the situation, but I was all set to get in it and, and go at it. And John said, leave it. Do you remember? You said, leave it alone. And it was resolved, poof, disappeared. Because the temptation, Adam and Eve wanted to be God and be independent of God. The sin of the garden, it's taken me years to understand that the sin of the garden was independence. Then it was rebellion because it went to an act of rebellion. But the issue was independence. And we have to be returned to the state of utter dependence. If we're going to have anything with God and for God, that's the state you have to come to. And Billy Graham succeeded in understanding that was what God was after. And that was the only thing he needed to give him. So then, because of Billy Graham's acquiescence to God, what he, did, what he had was this peculiar love for Jesus. He said, all I want to do is sit and tell him how much I love him. That's the fruit of the most abject, costly surrender is a love affair so ecstatic. Billy Graham experienced the ecstasy of the love affair with Christ. It's obvious to me he did. And the most, it doesn't mean you don't thrash and flail and, and hate and everything else combined with it. It's, it's, and I'm going to give you the secret of overcoming I came to a, a place in all that I've been through where, okay, let me say first, the Lord put me in Revelation 1 through 3 40 years ago. I've been in that ever since. And the one desire I've prayed for is to be an overcomer. And I fail so much that I can't see that it's happening, you know. But recently, the Lord said to me, you have overcome this particular whole lifelong war you have overcome. And he said to me, you have overcome death. And your daughter has overcome death. And then he told me how I overcame, which I did not know. I was doing it, not knowing it, but I was instinctively, it was happening within me in this mystery going on inside of you that you don't know, and you're doing the right thing, and you don't realize that he's doing it in you, and you don't even realize you're in the re resurrected life. That is intriguing me. Let the root of Christ go deep within you. Let the word dwell in you that has the power to change your life. Okay. <laughs> Here's how I overcame. And these people know the story of my life. And all the, all the many things that I have lived through that I've never told. In every situation, my goal, my life verse is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy strength, all thy might, and all thy whatever, everything. And that's the verse he brought me in on. That's the verse he accomplished in my life. That's got to be my foundation is loving him. It's the first commandment. You've heard these things. So he said, this is how you did it. You said, in this situation, Lord, I will love you. Even if you slay me, 
Job said, I will, yet will I slay, will I serve you. But in this situation, I would say, in this situation, I choose to love you. That's the choice, Morgan, to love him. And that's how Billy Graham handed his life. All I want to do is sit and tell him how much I love him. I wouldn't, I, I doubt I'd have two sentences to say. But Billy Graham had enough to say that he could sit with perfect satisfaction and tell the Lord how much he loved him. And the Lord showed me that was the secret he gave me without my knowing I had the secret of overcoming. I simply prayed, prayed, prayed to be an overcomer. And all I did was in each situation say, okay, Lord, I hate the situation. I really don't like you, but I choose to love you in this situation. Surrendered and living in the middle of this hot mess, as y'all say. So the the whole thing, that's the meaning of the whole thing, is to, what do you love? What do you love? And who do you love and whose love do you love? That's the question forever of each person, is it's always an issue of love. You will, what he comes after is what you love. I, I loved to work and keep a house. And I, I love to work in my garden. So what had to go? All the order that I'm accustomed to living in, all the peace. Of, oh, I had to learn to live without any peace in, the, in surroundings and wrote two books in the middle of it. And uh, everything that, that he touches, he's touching in some form your idol. We talked about it in the last podcast, the issue of work. So he, he came through, the wind came through, and wiped out that in my life. And to come to say, I will love you right here, and I will follow you, Lamb, right here. With simply a choice, not not especially a feeling or a love for him or a loyalty to him, but an instinctive choice was, okay, I'll love you here. He did train me in it, if, if it matters, to this conversation. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At Shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.